the back there, Todd. Hi, Matt. Um, there have been very few lead changes this postseason, only a couple after the fifth inning. Other than the added days off, what's allowed both fans across the league to just dominate so far? Yeah, I mean, days off are obviously a huge part of it. Um, I just think the stuff bullpens have now is kind of, I mean, pitchers throwing harder, stuff's breaking more, and, you know, more rest as well. So that'll definitely attribute to that. Can bullpens get hot as a group? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's this sport. You get hot in any aspect of it. So um, when, when everything's clicking for... For your team, I mean, it just, it's no different than hitting's contagious. It's kind of the same thing down there for us. Okay, here on the left, JP. Matt, thanks for your time. I'm, I'm curious, your, your background in North Dakota, yeah. how did baseball come to be your sport? Did you play different sports growing up from a family standpoint? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I've always been in love with the game of baseball. Um, I grew up going to all my dad's softball games, Tuesdays and Thursday nights, and just watching him play ball. And then it was kind of something I've always wanted to do. I played basketball and football growing up, but when I got to high school, I realized uh, football wasn't for me. I was about 87 pounds, so probably didn't belong out there anymore. But uh, yeah, obviously being left-handed, I always had that advantage, but uh, just I've always loved the game. And along those lines, as, as you are part of a bullpen, and certainly the bullpen seems to be the part of the team where there are so many unique <laughs> paths. Yeah. When you talk to your bullpen mates, what are some of the favorite stories you've heard and shared over the years about your paths? Yeah, I mean, uh, I always tell guys it takes one hot month for your life to change in this game. As long as, I mean, you're with a team, anything can happen in a month. Um, I think John Schreiber last year in Boston, his story of working coal mines his first two minor league seasons and then being one of the most dominant pitchers in our pen last year there. Um, I mean, you look at Orion, he was drafted last year and started in low A and now he's hit every level and hopefully we can get him to pitch in a World Series too. That'd be unbelievable to go from low A to, to a World Series game. So, um, you know, the, the bullpen, I always say that's where all the characters are. And uh, it's probably because all of our paths are different. It's a, it's a little rocky road for us sometimes. OK, we're going to go in the third row on the left here, Tyler. Yeah, a couple questions. First, Matt, um, you know, you're, you showed so much poise and, and the ability the other night to get that save to close out the Braves, right? And you hear so much about like how the ninth inning is different and it takes a special mentality, whatever. That's a super pressurized situation. You don't have many career saves. And you got right through it. Did you find it different? And do you think that, you know, as a talented big league reliever, that most guys can handle a ninth inning? Yeah, um, especially in our bullpen. I've been telling you guys all year that we got five or six closers down there. It just depends on who Topper wants to close the game. Um, me and my my path, I'm not a starter, I'm not a back end guy, I'm just a pitcher. So when the phone rang and it was me, it's just get the outs until the ball's no longer in your hand. So for me, I don't look at it as the, the save or whatever, it's just you gotta get an out. Like that's the way this game goes. When you're on the mound, outs are all you're thinking of. So it doesn't matter what the situation is, what the game situation is, I'm out there to try to get outs. And the other question I had, I mean, you've been in the league for a few years and everybody knows of Bryce Harper, but when you play with him, what was the most um, surprising thing or the most, the thing that you found that was different from what you expected, maybe? I mean, playing against him and playing with him, it, it all looks the same kind of, you know, it's a big spot and he's in it. It's probably not going your way, it's probably going his. So it's just, I mean, when you when you have a guy that the the lights are never too bright, um, you just you just hope you wear the same jersey as him because you definitely don't want to be facing him. But it's, it's un, unreal to watch. Okay, anything else, Matt? Over there on the left, second row. Matt, I know you've said all year you're just a pitcher, you just want the ball whenever. Yeah. But you started the year in the rotation. You've closed games. You closed out the NLDS, like we said. Sure. Just what have the last six, seven months been like for you? What's this journey been like being on this team and playing so many different roles for them? Yeah, um, I mean, honestly, it's probably the most ideal season for me. Don't get labeled as one thing and stuck in one role. I enjoy showing up to the park not knowing what's coming. Um, I think I drive myself crazy in a desk job doing the same thing every day. So I think that's what that's what's cool about my uniqueness is I can be thrown in any situation. I mean, Topper's told me 
after a game I'm starting the next day before. So it's like I, I enjoy that, and uh, I would honestly label this year as the most ideal season for me. Okay. Anything else? We'll go back to JP for one more. You do have one of the most impressive hairstyles in all of baseball, Matt. So uh, can you share with us, is, it, is there a superstition with it right now? What are the future plans for Matt Strom's haircut? Yeah, it all, it all started actually in 17 when I blew my knee out. I got a haircut the day I blew my knee out and then um, jokingly said I wasn't going to cut my hair again. And uh, after spending three months on crutches and in a brace, it just kind of got through the awkward stage and I let it go. Uh, my younger brother's always had long hair, and he's always told me I should grow it out, I should grow it out. So it was kind of like, all right, let's see. And just, it went, and uh, honestly, I don't know when I'm going to be able to cut it. My daughter, when I FaceTime her, if I have my hair up in a, a bun, she'll look at the camera like, who's that? And then when I take it down, she knows who it is. So it's uh, it's going to be here for a while, I think, until, uh, until her my wife tell me to cut it. So... Okay, we should take one more over there on the left and take uh, Tyler. Yeah, just last thing. Um, you obviously are well known for having a, a great interest in baseball cards. Is yeah. there one card or one set or one thing that you are most wanting to add to your collection, like the that you'd love to have but don't? I, I, I have one of them. I don't have the way I want it. I have a 1961 Roger Maris. Um, it's a PSA 4. I would like to get a 10. Um, but Roger Maris, North Dakota guy, 61 homers and 61. So I think having a 61 card would be cool in a PSA 10. Do they have them out there? Yeah, there are a few out there, but they're an arm and a leg, and I'm kind of cheap. So. <laughs> <laughs>